Hey everyone, Tim here. I was uh, doing some VOD review of the Gen G versus G2 quarterfinal series from the 2020 World Championships the other day, and while watching one of the games uh, and, and streaming that VOD review, you can you can catch the full the full stream VOD uh, on uh, Twitch.tv slash Tim Seven uh, if you want to watch the whole thing. But but while going through game two, especially in the early game, there was one situation that came up that created a really interesting opportunity to talk about ways to use win probability modeling. Uh, for coaching value and <clears throat> so I wanted to to kind of pull that part of the game out separately and make a quick video on it just to kind of illustrate that point so what we're we're looking at right now is we're eight minutes in it's a little bit covered there but we're we're eight minutes into game two uh Gen G against G2 Gen G has a, a comp with really strong uh, map mobility from the Twisted Fate a Camille that wants to scale up and and snowball in, in as a side laner uh, and you know, and a bit of a pick comp as well. This is a comp that's very much designed for getting a gold lead and wanting to kind of roll ahead of the game that way, not for sitting back, scaling up, stacking dragons, anything like that. On the G2 side, you've got the Shen and then the Silas who can steal the Twisted Fate ult. You're very much designed to uh, match the other team's map mobility, to respond to their plays, and you're going to scale better as a 5v5 comp here unless the other team has a good gold lead. So with those kind of win conditions in mind, we've got a map situation where uh, the minimap's quite small, but if you can see, uh, Genji have mid lane priority here uh, with BDD getting the wave pushed out. They've got their jungler on the top side and Yankos is coming in from the top lane. Uh, Rift Herald is up and there's a Cloud Drake alive still as well, the first dragon of the game. And so G2 have a choice to make here. <clears throat> They they also have, you know, their bot lane is still catching away here and Tom Kench is still in lane. Leona is starting to move already. They have a choice. They could either try to defend this Rift Herald. They're not going to be there first, but they could be there second and try to team fight for it. Uh, or they could, you know, look for a straggler or a pick, something like that, something more creative. Or they could allow the other team to get the Rift Herald and they could take the Cloud Drake for themselves. Now, there, there are a lot, of, a lot of decisions that go into this. You... You don't want to give up the Rift Herald because that fits the enemy team win, con uh, win conditions so well. Uh, but the dragons are good for your comp as G2. You are the scaling comp, so stacking is good. Uh, and right now at this state of the game, you probably don't have a great toolkit for fighting here. Since you're going to be there second, you don't have the best tools for uh, engaging into a team that already has a setup. And uh, they can turn out of the pit with their pick tools pretty well onto you. So... In this situation, if we watch what G2 actually does, uh, <clears throat> they are going to come in here. They're going to they're going to kind of sit Yankos in the top lane. Caps has to come back and clear this wave. Now they're getting into this point where, okay, Gen G think they're giving up this herald to us. Their bot lane actually starts to go back into the bottom lane. They're a little unsure what they want to do. Uh, G2 clear the mid wave, and now Caps moves up, looking. And, and what he's saying is, we do want to contest this. Yanko's also coming in from the river. They're saying, we're going to fight for this Herald. If this fight works, it could potentially win the game because it it gives you... G2 already have a 500 gold lead. It could balloon that to quickly 1,500, 2,000. It could almost win them the game. But they don't, you know, they, they don't necessarily know where Leona is, but they know that the enemy bot lane has plenty of opportunity to be here first. There's a lot of risk and a lot of threat from that bot lane being first. G2's bot lane is pushing out, but Caps has leaned up, Yankos has leaned up, and this is the wrong call from my perspective. There's too little chance of this rotation succeeding, and uh, not enough of a risk if they don't contest this. This is not going to win the game for Gen G. It's good for Gen G, but there's a very valid option of, instead, having brought Yankos not through the top lane here, but through the jungle or through the mid lane and just trading for the dragon. What you're going to see is that Yankos actually adds an individual mistake on top of the team macro mistake here. He ends up in range of the gold card, he gets picked off, gives up that gold for that kill, and now the Herald is free. But since G2 have invested uh, the Silas map movement on that side, they no longer have the opportunity to take the dragon. Uh, and they only would have been able to get that dragon if Yankos was actually positioned for it. If you compare the game state before this play to the game state after it, and if you run the gold difference, <clears throat> you run uh, the the potential that uh, G2 would not have given up that kill gold, plus they would have had the dragon, 
And then if you also look at the way, rest of the way this plays out, because of that kill, now Genji get to reset from that Herald. It goes a little further on. They get to regain mid priority. They get to push out bot. They control the bot side of the map enough that a little later, they get the first dragon as well. So you put all of those factors together in that that desire from G2 to contest the Herald and the individual mistake from Yankos to get picked off swings the gold or the, the win probability by 9.1 percentage points uh, in Genji's favor. That may not sound like a ton, but it's pretty significant. If you go from, say, you know, 55% chance of winning the game up to 64, that's that's actually a pretty big swing. And it wasn't a big swing that would require a lot of effort or investment. All they had to do was say, we aren't in a good position to fight for Harold here. We could get the dragon for free. They get something good for their win conditions. We get something good for our win conditions. And it's a lot safer as well. There's no, there's really no inherent risk to that play. So it's, it's a, a few small decisions, a few very quick things in a narrow time window that could have, uh, and you can use the win probability model to measure the actual value of those decisions and say, look, this was a nine percentage point play. Uh, you could look at other scenarios and say, here's a 13 percentage point play, a four percentage point play, whatever it is. And I think this is a, a really interesting way to compare the value of plays, the value of decisions. Hope you enjoyed that breakdown. If you want to know more about the win probability modeling I do, there's a link to uh, some information about that in the video description. I uh, re really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel, like the video, uh, leave a comment to discuss, uh, and look forward to seeing you on stream and here on the YouTube channel some more in the future as well.